question, how to arrange composition. So pieces can be one dimensional and a one dimensional piece is just gonna have sort of like one plane. It's just one planar surface with imagery. If you do a one dimensional planar arrangement, this is typically the easiest way to start with discrete objects. And you can arrange a very attractive one dimensional piece with discrete objects. I would say this is the easiest type of drawing to accomplish well, and you should try to start by doing this. Another type of compositional organization is what I would call a, a three planes piece. So this is a piece where there's sort of, it's not, it's not continuous horizon perspective. It's a piece with actually kind of three distinct planes. There's a plane in front that's holding the woman. There's a plane in the middle. So that's a little bit further back that's holding the hill and the castle. And then there's a plane in the background that's holding the furthest away, the sky. So there's plane one, plane two, plane three. This is, I think, the next step to starting to do scenes is you develop a little bit of three-dimensionality by arranging discrete pieces within these planar regions. And this is Durer, who is a master of this type of piece. Okay, and then another type of piece is a perspective drawing, where in a perspective drawing, there's gonna be a distinct horizon and there's gonna be elements that are converging on that horizon. So this is a sort of like, it's like the continuation of the three planes, except it's now continued to infinite planes, infinite degradation or gradations of perspective. I think this is harder than the three planes. Okay, and then there's obviously a fourth sort of category of pieces all to themselves, which is abstract painting. And the whole idea behind abstract painting is to evoke feeling and emotion with form and color. So it's 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 not necessarily about evoking perfect imagery. It's about evoking a feeling. Okay, so this is totally different. So your considerations for each of these things is going to be different. But there are some rules that you should probably follow if you want an attractive piece. Okay, so my rule number one would be you need to balance the positive and negative space. Positive space is space that's filled with objects on the drawing. Negative space is sort of space that's left blank, okay? And if you have an imbalance, this is literally like a yin and a yang. If you have an imbalance, it makes the observer feel uncomfortable. You might be trying to do that, but it's gonna make your piece less attractive if your intention is to make sort of an attractive piece. So there needs to be a balance between negative and positive space. Okay, rule number two is every pixel needs to have purpose. You can't have spots of the piece that are boring or uninteresting or perhaps not treated well, okay? So here's a piece by Otto Dix. You might say, well, this part of the area ha is, doesn't have a purpose. No, that's not true. This The purpose of these white pixels is to take up negative space so, the, so, the, so that the piece feels balanced. Now look at the positive space where Dix is actually doing his drawing. Within the context of where he's doing the drawing, everything is treated equivalently. There's a trench in the background that he's treating with equal care to draw the elements as he is in the face, okay? So the sort of like the line density is even and he's treating each area with respect so that the entire piece is interesting. So a big mistake that people do when they're arranging their composition is they focus intensely on one little piece right here, and then they don't spend any time on the background or any time on anything else, and it it creates a an uneven piece. Okay, rule number three is you need to strategically think about conducting the eye, okay? So you as the artist are the conductor of the viewer's eye, and you can direct where that eye goes. So when I look at this piece, here's another piece by Dix, there are two places where my eye is focused. My eye is focusing on this person's eyes and this person's mouth. And my eye just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, okay? So understand that when you create a visual piece, you create eye movement patterns. And if you can strategically create good eye movement patterns, you can get people to just continuously stare at the piece as opposed to wanting to look away. All right, third and final dicks. Rule number four, it must be attractive. You have to want to look at the piece. So if you look at this, if you look at this painting, 
there's so much in here that I want to look at. I want to look at her face because her eyes are so so mesmerizing. I want to look at the tiger skin because I actually feel the texture of the jaguar skin. Look back here. There's a very interesting dog in the background that that you want to look at. And yet he's still so here's a good example of where Dix is still balancing negative and positive space. The dog is in is in negative space because it's in the black background. You can barely even see it. But then when you detect it, you look at it. OK, so you have it has to be attractive. I mean, I don't I don't quite know how to teach how to draw something that's attractive, but, you know, attractive when you see it. And so I can teach the process of how to progressively eliminate unattractive things from your piece. So if you have a piece and you're working on a composition and let's say you're working out your composition, let's say you you like this thing, it's good, you, but you don't like this thing, okay? So you need to, as you're drawing, progressively make decisions. And if you don't like that, if that part of it is unattractive, you need to erase that and get rid of that. And then iteratively put different things in there until you find a composition that is attractive. So every drawing is a series of experiments where you make a test is, does that make it more attractive? If it makes it less attractive, you delete that. And you just continuously doing that over and over and over. And eventually you arrive at a composition that is completely attractive. 